friends, I am Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the fuck, and today I'm going to talk to you about time and efficiency and how long it actually takes to take coasters from inception all the way to the end, resin backed and ready to go. If you were a fluid painter, just getting into the world of fluid painting, chances are you have tried or are considering trying pouring on the ubiquitous ceramic tile. They come in all shapes and sizes and they're easily attainable and they're cheap, so why not? And like so many of the rest of us, you're probably going to, or at least thinking about making coasters. What nobody really talks about is how long and how much effort coasters actually are. So today I'm gonna to talk about it because you know me, I like to be real. Sometimes I'm too real, but that's okay. The ubiquitous ceramic tile. What could be easier or cheaper to start on? They come in different sizes, different shapes. They're already primed and glossy and perfect for painting. So why the heck not? We all do it. It's a great way to learn. Now, what do you do when you have painted several hundred tiles and they are taking up all the space in your house? You got a few options, but most people elect to make coasters. Now, coasters are a two-part thing. Obviously, once you've painted them and let them cure, you've got to top coat them. So then there is resin. We'll get to that. What's deceiving about the ease and convenience of using tiles is all of the work that goes into it. And then how much do you charge? Now that can be an entirely different conversation and maybe it will be, but today I'm really gonna talk about the time that it takes and how to do it efficiently. So if you do wanna make coasters and this is a way for you to sell your art and fund your art habit because obviously this stuff gets expensive, this is how. This is how you budget your time and hopefully I can provide a few tricks that helps it go a little easier on you. So the first thing you're gonna do is decide on a color palette. You're gonna pick out your pillow paint and then you're gonna pick out all the other colors that you wanna to go together. And then you're gonna test them. Now I didn't film my test for these coasters, but what did I do but start with a normal ceramic tile. I get these in a box of 100. They break out to be about 15 cents a piece. So if I majorly screw up, I don't care. And believe me, I do. Fun fact, if you do majorly screw up and you hate it, once these are dry, you can soak it in a Pull the paint right off, <laughs> soak it in water and it's just, just peels. It's great. Then you can scrub them and reuse them. All about sustainability, right? So I poured on a test tile. This is a four inch by four inch ceramic tile. I poured on my pillow paint. I added the colors in the order I thought they would best go in. I added my cell activator, I blew it out and hey, it worked. So that's where we're starting from this video. I am using six inch, well, from point to point, six inch ceramic tiles that are black and they're matte. These are, for this set of coasters, I am using four inch ceramic tiles that have a black satin coating on them. And then using black pillow paint, which is color placed by Walmart. This works great for me, but if it doesn't work for you, a lot of people really like Sherwin-Williams color to go. If you're outside of America or Canada, join the Chalet Art Group. That way you can talk to people from other countries and they can give you their tips and tricks and tell you what they use in the country in which they live. So where are we for time? Well, we've spent time selecting and purchasing our paint, selecting and purchasing our tiles. If we don't have a dedicated space, prepping a space for paint and carving out time out of our schedule. Well, the next thing is paint prep. Let's talk about mixing your pouring medium. Now that is an entirely different conversation. Since I'm using both pigments and paints in these coasters, I have to make two separate pouring mediums because they require separate recipes to get them to all work together really nicely. And especially for the metallic pigments to really, really shine. I do have my pouring medium recipe down in the description, but that is an entire other chunk of time. So is preparing the pillow paint because I mix some GAC 800, which I know Golden is changing the name, but I mix it in there to prevent crazing. So there is pillow paint preparation and then there is mixing your pouring medium. Now this can take, depending on how quick you work or how easy and accessible it is for you to do this, this can add another hour to two <laughs> depending, uh, I tend to make a huge mess, so maybe it takes a little longer, but add that in there too. Then we mix our paints. Once you've mixed up your paint and your pigments, you need to let the bubbles go. Ideally wait a day, but if you don't have a day or you're super impatient like me, at least let them sit for, you know, half an hour, an hour, get your tools ready, get your nasty painting clothes on, get a glass of wine, 
light a candle, light some incense, turn on some mood music, whatever it is you need to do to help you paint your very best. It's a perfect time, you know, letting the bubbles pop. Before you start, you've got to gather your tools. What I'm using today is an aluminum cake spinner. I've got a 12 inch silicone mat on top of that. And then I have individual six inch silicone cake pans. Now, I found all of it on Amazon, pretty easy to search. And the reason I have all of this is it just makes everything much quicker and easier to clean up because paint peels right off of silicone and I save my skin so I can make jewelry and peeling it off silicone just makes me a lot happier. I've also got a torch if I need it, and I've got a toothpick, and I've got a scalpel. I also have some older paint cups because I don't really use my paint cups. They're too hard to get completely clean. So I will set them aside and use them as drying racks. So I'll set then my tiles on top of the cups to dry. The coasters I'm making in today's video were a Christmas present for my mother. So I selected colors that I knew she would love. The first one I'm using is Pepio Iridescent Green Blue. This is not to be confused with the Iridescent Blue Green, which is slightly more blue than this, though they look really, really similar. So this is the Green Blue. The next color I'm using today is Color Art. This is a pigment and the color is Key Lime. Now you can see it looks very, very different in the jar than it does when you mix it up with some pouring medium. That's pretty typical for Color Art, but man, they are gorgeous. Next, I am using another pigment. This is called This Little Piggy in Golden Peach. This you can only buy from fluidart.com. I have got that linked below. It is not an affiliate link, just trying to help you out. Following that up with Jacquard Pearl X in Misty Violet. This is yet another pigment. So I'm using tube paint, pigment, 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 pigment. <laughs> and following that up with Arteza Metallic White. My cell activator is Australian Floetrol in Golden Carbon Black. That is a heavy body paint. For blooms, I mix it four to one Floetrol to paint. The recipes I'm using for these coasters are the Chalie Art recipes. If you don't know Chalie Art or the Bloom Technique, she offers a very reasonably priced class. I've got a link below also for a 15% discount. As soon as you sign up, you get to take as soon as you sign up, you get to join a private Facebook group, and that is bloomers from the entire world around, and you can learn an infinite amount. It is possibly the most valuable part of the course is being part of that group. The people in there will help you troubleshoot, work your way through your problems. If things aren't working, we will figure it out and we will help you through it. Also, paint seems to change a lot, so we'll also help you find new recipes when your favorite paint gets discontinued or the formula changes and it's not your favorite paint anymore. So I told you we were talking about time and efficiency today, so I'm going to tell you about how I paint for, well, in this video, five coasters in as short a time of period as possible. In as short a period of time as possible. So I put on my paints, I blow it out, I cover the edges and then I set it aside. And then I bring up the next bare tile, start from the beginning, get to the point that I've blown it out, worked all the paint around the edges, then I set it aside. At that point, I can bring back that first one and tilt and spin until I like it, or I can just let it keep developing and then do a third or a fourth. Now, there's a few things to consider weather being one if it's cold extra cold or extra hot and it's affecting the way your paint is operating you're gonna want to maybe gauge how it's responding you know temperature and humidity can make a huge difference so you'll know where you live how things tend to act in certain seasons now this is winter so i can wait a little bit longer it seems so i paint i blow I set it aside. Now, why do I set it aside and not continue going right away? Well, when you blow it out, the paint needs to come back into the center before you spin it, and you're gonna get the best cells that way. So it's working in your favor to set it aside and work on another tile in the meantime. If you've ever seen any one of my videos, you know I have ADHD and I don't like very long videos. So the actual duration of the time it took me to paint these five tiles was 39 minutes and 18 seconds, according to my original video file. Of course, I have sped that up in many places, cut out a few long pauses, and I'm showing it to you oftentimes at double speed, quite frequently at quadruple speed, and some short pauses, I have got that up to eight times. <laughs> 
the normal speed. So it definitely takes some time. Now I've been blooming for a while, so doing five coasters in 40 minutes is fairly efficient. And I hope that you get to be efficient too, because it's a lot more enjoyable when everything goes pretty smoothly. And I say five because I put in that one where I reverse the colors and poof, you know, everybody likes a beautiful shade of vomit, right? Right, pastel metallic vomit, because that's what it looked like. If you enjoy my videos, if you learn something, if you laugh a little bit, please like and subscribe. It helps me immensely and also encourages me to keep going. All of my social media links are linked in the description box below, including my website and shop, my Instagram, my Patreon, and all that fun stuff. Once they are done, they need to cure for several weeks. Some people say two weeks, some people say a month, some people say longer. Some people say shorter. I like to err on the side of longer. Now I was pushing myself to get Christmas presents done. So I only had three weeks from painting these to having to have them resined in order for them to be done for my family for Christmas. Before we get to the resining segment, let me tell you about the prep work there. Now, first of all, you have to select and buy your resin and that can take a little while to do all the research and figure out what you think is gonna work best for you. Next, you have to prepare a space. Resining is not the healthiest thing for your lungs. So you've got to have a respirator. You'll see in the clip I'm going to show you, I am just wearing a standard face mask because my respirator had not arrived in time and I didn't have time to spare. So I resin in my bathroom with the door shut. And in order to get the best results from my resin, there's a couple of things I do. First of all, I run the shower super hot. So the whole room fills with steam and it helps the particulates settle. It also warms up the room because in Wisconsin, in the winter, <laughs> keeping a room between 70 and 75 isn't always as easy as it might be if you live in a warmer climate. The next thing I do is I actually stop the drain on the bathtub so it fills up with that warm water and I put my jugs of resin and hardener right in the water so they warm up. That helps the bubbles release. While my resin is heating up, I prep the tiles. So there's a few things to note. If you have any fingerprints, any grease, any residue on your tiles whatsoever, the resin's not gonna stick to it and you're gonna have to re-resin. Nobody likes to re-resin, so take the time to prep. A lot of people will use baby wipes, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, 70%, 90%, whatever you've got, as long as it doesn't eat your paint, which every once in a while it does. Wipe the tiles down real clean. Make sure you're wearing gloves so you don't accidentally put more fingerprints on there. And then make sure that all of the lint has been removed too because baby wipes and alcohol swabs and all of that leave behind a lot of lint. So <laughs> clean that off too. You have to make sure your surface is level Resin is self-leveling, and if your surface is not level, guess where your resin's gonna go? Right off the side and into your nightmares. You'll then see, it looks like I've mixed my resin in a coffee cup. Not so, my resin is actually mixed in a plastic cup, and then I put it in a coffee cup with hot water in it to keep it warm. I use a metal butter knife, non-porous, to prevent more bubbles from happening. Mix it until you can't see any difference anymore, no clouds, no striations, and then put it on top of the coasters. Use my heat gun, flash it out. I use KS resin. I think it's pretty good. A lot of people use other things. That's cool too. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with resin. I love the way it looks, but I really I really don't enjoy doing it. It's so much prep work and you have to be so exact. And when I say exact, I mean not just mixing the hardener and the resin, but I also mean leveling all of your surfaces, making sure that your environment is as lint and as dust free as possible, making sure it's the right temperature, making sure that you have an absolutely perfect, uninterruptible amount of time to do this. Also, if you're like me and you resin in the bathroom, making sure that nobody else has to use the bathroom. I'm showing you clips of this resin work. In total, I am resining three sets of four coasters each, 12, which for me is the maximum I can do in one setting. And what you're seeing here, not including all of the prep, was 42 minutes. The prep is probably another hour, hour and a half on top of that. So where are we at time-wise now? Okay, so we're at two hours minimum before you even get to painting with preparation. Painting itself may take an hour, may take a little longer if you're a little newer and not quite as quick. Then there's the three weeks to a month that you wait. And then there's resining, which takes a good two and a half hours. 
What I'm not showing you in this video is the very final finishing work. Once the coasters have cured, which takes for my resin one day to touch and then three days to work with, I then have to sand the edges because of the drips, make sure all of those are sanded off, and then I paint the bottom one solid color. For these, I painted them black. And then you need to affix the cork or the felt or whatever it is you're using on the bottom to make them coasters that don't scratch furniture. So there you add another 10 minutes, 15 minutes per. So there's another hour for just one set. As you can see, coasters can be beautiful and a lot of fun to make, but it's also gonna be a huge amount of time. There is a myth in fluid art that it's fast and that it's quick and then it's easy, but there is so much that is involved from selecting and purchasing all of the things that you're gonna want to selecting your color combinations, to testing, to see if you've got things right with your recipes, your pouring mediums, your pillow paints, making sure your environment is correct, making sure that your space is prepped and that you have everything you need to go, paper towels, gloves, toothpicks, spatulas. If you're using resin, a respirator or a mask or some way to clear the air. There's all the time you need to let them cure to consider. And then there is the finishing work, the sanding, putting on backs. Now, if they're gifts, you just wrap them up and give them. But if you're an artist selling your art, there's also transporting them to craft fairs or if you're online, taking listing photos and listing them. This is all a huge amount of time and effort. Now, if we're gonna even talk about money, how much are you paying yourself an hour? That's the first thing to consider. The second is totaling up your material costs, which It'll get complicated, and it'll get expensive, and it'll look a little bit scary when you consider you have bought a gallon of this and a gallon of that and two gallons of this, and then have to try to break it out over ounces, over how many ounces actually goes on a coaster. I haven't done that math yet, but let me know if you want to see that in a video and I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be really frightening. At this point, I am going to say, Au revoir, and take you in for some close-up footage of the very finished coasters and show you what a good six solid hours of work will get you. Do you really want to put a drink on that? Is it bourbon? If it's bourbon, I'll do it. Thanks for watching and have a really swell time. Swell. Have a gnarly time. A rad time. A tubular time? Gnarly? Bodacious? Cowabunga. Have a cowabunga time. Can you tell him Drew me about the beach? I really miss the beach. I really miss traveling. Bon voyage.